We purchased our Colorado in 2013 with the intention of making it as a touring vehicle so we'll just have a bit of a run through now just to show you what we have done and the way that we've set it up for the things that we need. Starting at the front of the vehicle we put a MCC rebar on it, a little bit of protection and with that we've mounted two HID driving lights on the front for nighttime driving. The rebar has got two aerial mounts and as you can see we have two aerials and I'll run through that shortly as to why we finished up with two and not just one. And behind the bull bar we've got a bonnet stone guard just to try and stop some of the stone chips on the front of the bonnet. You never know when you might have to do a deep water crossing so we've had a snorkel fitted also enable a lot uh, cleaner and fresher air to go into the motor when we're on dusty roads. Good mirrors make for easier towing when we got the caravan on so we've had clear view caravan mirrors fitted. We had them on the previous vehicle and there's not much that you can get that's any better. And on front and rear doors we've got the weather shield fitted just so we can leave the windows down when parked up in the sun, let a bit of air flow through the vehicle. And on the rear of the vehicle trying to help with a few stones hitting the caravan we've got a set of rock tamers that we leave on there all the time. Currently we're running uh, highway train tyres and until such time that we need the all terrain we'll keep them on there because they're quite good, they're the Cooper Discovery. And with all our tyres on the caravan and the tow vehicle we've got the tyre monitoring system which I'll show you shortly. Now for a quick look under the bonnet. I have fitted a pre-lined fuel filter and that is mainly there as a water trap and that gives an audible uh, alarm inside the driver's cab as well as a flashing light should there be water in the fuel and that gives you that very early detection. That's just a quick shot there of the water filter come water separator alarm panel thing. It's got the audible alarm and the light. We have fitted an oil catch can with the intention of keeping the intake system a lot cleaner. Everything that's fitted to this vehicle as far as electrical gear goes, it's all fused. There's not one live wire that hasn't got a fuse on it and it become a bit of a mess here at the battery with wires coming off the battery so I fitted up a bus bar and moved all my relays and everything back to there so it's all on the firewall now and uh, nice and neat and tidy, tucked out of the way and easily accessible. Now we'll have a quick look what we've got uh, mounted up on the roof. To support everything on the roof we've got two rhino bars and they're mounted above the vehicle itself on above the cabin and above the canopy at the back to mount everything we've got a rhino rack, a pioneer rack as they call them. That's quite good because we've adapted everything that we've got to fit onto that rack. It's only a matter of taking things off like a jigsaw and putting something else on. Very handy. At the front of the roof rack is a 42 inch curved light bar which complements the HID lights on the rebar. It gives more side light than what a HID will so that's very very good like that. Mounted on the right hand front side is a set of recovery treads. Hopefully we'll never need to use them but at times we did get stuck with another vehicle and wish we did have them so we're going to carry them now. We carry a six foot extension ladder or folding ladder. Should anything ever go wrong up on the roof of the caravan we had no way of getting up there before so with this one at least we've got access. And on the side of the roof rack we've got our long handled shovel. On the left hand side of the roof racks we've got our fold out awning or roll out awning whatever we want to call that one. Something we're not using very often but we have used it in the past. It's quite handy when you're travelling without the caravan. On the left hand side of the roof bars we've got a 150 watt solar panel mounted up top and that'll keep our battery in the back in conjunction with our 25 amp DC charger working. It'll keep that battery charged. With everything else that's mounted up on the roof it left us this little space here which was a bit oblong to tie our firewood in so we made up this roof rack here if you want to call it that and uh, it'll enable us to cart a bit of firewood without it trying to roll away. 
Now I'll give you a bit of a quick run through what we've done inside, not a lot, but we have changed a few things, added a couple of things as well. We have a tyre monitoring system which is seated there or located there on the front windscreen. It uh, will tell us if we've got any flat tyres or losing pressure and it has an audible alarm as well as vis visual screen to see what's going on. We have upgraded the stereo in this one and it enables us to use the rear reversing camera for the car and the rear one on the caravan both on the screen rather than have it elsewhere. And we've got a TomTom -tom navigator, you can't go too many places with that, it's got most of the camping areas in it and so on, so quite handy there. Our first radio to be fitted to this vehicle was this one that we're looking at now. It was more of a convenience sake because there was just nowhere to mount anything that was larger with the main control box being under the centre console area, so it's out of sight. To enable us to fit another UHF radio which was more suited to what we wanted, we had to fit this overhead console, so the radio's mounted up there. It's reasonably hard to get a good photo of it, but it's right in my ear and it really makes it easy for me to hear what's going on and just a short reach to do anything with it when driving. On the driver's side of the overhead console, we've mounted a voltmeter, which gives us a readout of the battery voltage on the auxiliary battery mounted in the back and the little blue light to the front. That's an indicator light to tell us that the 25 amp DC solar charge is working correctly for the battery also fitted to the back. We have a turbo timer fitted to the engine, hopefully to give a little bit more protection to the turbo. Something that a lot of people say is not really needed on the modern motor car, but you can never be too su uh, sure about that. We have fitted an iDrive throttle controller. It certainly makes a little bit of difference to the way the vehicle drives. Now we'll dive in the back and see what we've got in there. We have a drawer system in the back of this one and at the time that we bought the drawers the wings weren't uh, available so it wasn't very hard to make up a set myself so we've got a set of pockets at the front and the sides allows us to store anything we want to do in the side there. The drawers are not a deep system but they're plenty deep enough for what we want to store in them. When the vehicle was new we had a tub liner fitted and that offered a bit more protection to the tailgate and although it doesn't protect the tub very much more now because of the drawer system, it does do the sides. Mounted on the driver's side, it's a bit hard to see here with the colours, but we have a tyre step which is mounted there for when we want to use it. And that's with the tyre step in location, it just gives you that little bit extra height to get up onto the roof rack. And on the left hand side in a similar fashion we've got a more of a solid folding step that we also use when we want a little bit more height from the ground. I have done a separate video on this one but we've got an MSA drop down fridge slide which is very good now and you can see inside of the fridge. And this one's a bit hard to see as well with the colours but I've made an overhead box which allows us to store our tables and folding stools and that way they're not just floating around on the floor in the back getting in the way. And you're now looking inside the overhead storage box with the door folded down, a table and a few stools in there. Just keeps them nice and neat and tidy in the back of the vehicle. We have a second battery that's mounted in the back in a battery box which I made up with all the switches and associated plugs that we use and allows us to charge everything either electrically with our drone batteries or USB as we can see here with the GoPro batteries. I will be doing a separate video on this battery box and how it was made and what it's used for. On top of the battery box to help with the charge with the solar panel on the roof we've got a tw projector 25 amp DC solar charger which looks after the battery, it's a 105 amp hour battery. The only changes to the suspension that we've done is we've removed the rear springs, had the leaves reset and an additional spring leaf fitted each side to compensate for the extra weight of the caravan to bring it back to a good towing height with the weight distribution hitch used. And last but not least, little old Teddy swinging from the mirror 
He's just about been around Australia with us, this fella. If you like the video that you just watched, give us a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of our videos, hit the subscribe button. And once you've done that, tap on the bell and change the notification to all. That way every time we do uploads to our YouTube channel, you'll be notified.